And that's funny because they even make fun of that in the show. In the show, they got like, like in the in the commercial, they got like white tee men with suits and glasses on bringing in a bunch of uh, GUNs into, you know, into the black community. And they making fun of that. They will put you in all of these uh, levels of oppression and then turn around and make a comedy about it. I think that's what's wild to me. You know what I'm saying? They'll turn around. They'll, that's just wild to me how you can profit off of the oppression of black people and make fun of it at the same time and make money off of that. That's wild. That's wild. That's where we at right now. You know what I'm saying? That's where we at. Babylon is going to Babylon. Babylon is always Babylon. I'm not supporting it. I'll tell you that right now. Peace and power to the descendants of my ancient mother. My name is Brother Legend. What's going on? What up, what up? Hope everybody's well. If you're joining us on YouTube, my TikTok is B-I-G-B-R-O-L-G-N-D. You can join us there. What's going on? I've been away for a little bit. Hope everybody's well. What up, what up, what up? TikTok is playing with me right now at this character limit. What up, what up? Welcome in, welcome in. Bring your melon in. What up, what up? Yo, I just made a video about this and kind of got me like my got kind of got my chest tight, to be honest. I seen the trailer just now, like you know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. The obsession with our community is kind of weird. It's kind of weird. And I feel like I know it's about to happen, you know what I'm saying? What always happens is we're going to keep to ourselves. We're not going to say nothing. We just going to let it rock, you know what I'm saying? We just going to you know, just let it, you know, do what it do. You know, we mind our business. It's just not for me. It's just not my taste. But to be honest, this pissed me off. This pissed me off. Did y'all see the trailer for this show? This actually upset me. I ain't going to front. This actually upset me. Because it, it's, it's just, it's propaganda at this point. It's like they're playing in our face at this point. You know what I'm saying? It's like they're playing in our face. It's not even indirect anymore. It's not even indirect anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of wild. Why we always got to be short on, I don't know what that means. What do you mean by that? I don't know what you're talking about. But it's kind of like they're playing in our face at this point. And then... They made good times. I wonder if they made it a cartoon because nobody's going to make a live version of this anymore. But how you got two old white men deciding that they're going to reboot Good Times? And then they put Steph Curry's name on it. Like, Steph, you know, that's Steph Curry. So, yeah. The blacks love him, you know? It's just kind of weird, man. It's weird. You know, executive producer means he paid for something. That don't mean, you know... He had any creative direction. It just means, you know, hey, you know what? Pay us something and uh, we'll call you executive producer. Now we get to put your name up there. You know, I feel like they I feel like they kind of using them. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what that means. What do y'all mean? Short on rent, big on love. What are y'all talking about? Oh, that's what it says up here. Oh, OK. I, you know what? I didn't even get that far into it. I'm telling you, I seen the trailer. My chest got tight, and I said, nah, I ain't even get there. That is what it says up there, short on big, short on rent, big on love. Why are we short on rent? What black person do you know is short on rent? 
What black person do you know is short on rent? Let's be honest. Let's be, let's be all the way a thousand. We'll be short on food. We'll be short on hot water. We'll be short on gas, electricity. Um, we'll be short on internet. We'll be short on uh, subscriptions to Netflix and, and other streaming services. We'll be all of that before we short on rent. Let's be all the way for real. Let's be all the way for real. <laughs> There's statistics to back this. Black people are the most likely to pay their mortgage and the most likely to get their rent paid because we're not trying to be out on the street. It ain't safe for us out on the street. I'll tell you right now, we'll be short on clothes. We'll be short on food. We'll be short on everything. I'll, we'll be short on everything else. We got enough gas to get to work and we're going to pay the rent. You know what I'm saying? So... Again, um, more black uh, trauma porn for uh, white executive producers to make fun of black trauma. I'm tired of it. I was tired of it with the Cleveland show. Yes, this is the same executive producer as the Cleveland show. You know, the Cleveland show that had a white man voicing a black man. Cleveland, you know, Cleveland Brown. From Family Guy, you know, the Cleveland show. Uh, the, the voice actor was a white T man. The voice actor for Cleveland Brown was a white T man. Now, what do you call, what genre of entertainment is it called when a white T man voices or, or, or makes a mockery in a caricature of a black person Right. And it's a comedy and they're making fun of black like stereotypes and, and, and things about black. Like, what do you call that? What do you call that? When a white man, when a white man is a character that's a black person and they make fun of black stereotypes and things going on in the black. community, What do they call that? I think they call that minstrelsy. Right? I think that's called blackface. I think that's called blackface. And you know what's funny? They caught themselves in their own BS. That's what's funny. After three seasons um, of the Cleveland show, after, after a few seasons of the Cleveland show, I'm not sure if it was exactly three, but after a few seasons of the Cleveland show, in 2021... They decided in Family Guy now, not the Cleveland show because that got canceled, but in Family Guy, they decided that they were going to make Cleveland Brown's voice a black man now. He's 29 years old, a young black man, voiced voices Cleveland now. You see, they fired the white guy because they got called out. I remember when they were getting called out. And so now they got a black guy in 2021, just a few years ago. They figured they, 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 figured they would switch that up, which shows you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It, it, they, it, they switched the character to a black person, but it shows you just how problematic it was because they had to switch it. And they shouldn't even switch it. The whole, the whole show should have been wrecked, should have just been gone. That whole character, you can't name me one show. You can't name me one show about a white family where the voices of black people, the executive producers, the executive producers behind the whole thing are black people. You can't show me one show where uh, the writers are black people and we just making fun of uh, raisin salad. Uh, what else they be eating? We making fun of um, flat booties. Everybody got a flat, not, not a curve in the family. Everybody, you know, we'll, where do you see that at? Were we, were we making fun of thin lips? You see what I'm saying? Where, where, where's that show at? It should be produced by Tyler Perry. You know what I'm saying? That don't make no, that don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. And Living Color is not about white people, so that's weird that you even said that. But Boondocks is about a black family. Name a show about a white family. 
Y'all trying to fit, y'all trying to, y'all, y'all searching. Go ahead, go start Googling. I know that's what you're doing. You trying to find, hold on, we gotta prove this. We gotta prove this and we're wrong. There's some no, nah, we gotta. Making fun of white people is not the same thing as making propaganda to to uh to perpetuate stereotypes and make fun of trauma that black people go through. Why are you making fun? That's the only that's the wildest part about the whole thing is white people will disenfranchise you. Uh they will they will uh take resources from your community, um, you know, siphon them, siphon uh wealth out of your community, siphon D rugs and and uh, pew pews in because we don't make none of those. We don't like. I've never seen one brother that got a a, a coke a yocane plant in his house. <laughs> I, I I never seen one one uh factory. I never I never had a a, a Smith and Jackson. I never seen a a pew pew factory led uh uh owned by a black person. Where now we got a Smith and Jackson. I don't know where those are at. I don't know where those are at. And I know I know they're not widely being used. So what I'm trying to say is, and that's funny because they even make fun of that in the show. In the show, they got like like in the in the commercial, they got like white team men with suits and glasses on bringing in a bunch of uh GUNs into, you know, into the black community. And they making fun of that. They will put you in all of these. Uh, levels of oppression and then turn around and make a comedy about it. I think that's what's wild to me. You know what I'm saying? They'll turn around. They'll, that's just wild to me how you can profit off of the oppression of black people and make fun of it at the same time and make money off of that. That's wild. That's wild. That's where we at right now. You know what I'm saying? That's where we at. Babylon is going to Babylon. Babylon is always Babylonian. I'm not supporting it. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not supporting it. You have your child watching this. The adultification of a young baby. I, he's not showing on screen. It's funny because they got little baby, they got dub baby, and they got Birdman baby uh, in the commercial having an argument, and they start pew pewing at the young baby in the show who's dealing D rugs. He's dealing D rugs. I'm being TikTok friendly. D R U G S. He's dealing those, and he's a baby. And y'all know what that means. Like, come on now. This is ridiculous. Adultification in black boys. That's literally something that's really, actually, uh, having a negative effect on black boys to this day. The youngest person to ever be executed in the United States was a young black boy. He was so small that when they put him in the electric chair, he had to put they had to put phone books underneath him. They put phone books underneath him because his head wasn't reaching the, 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 the part that electrifies you. And so now it's not enough for them to say that we deal the rugs and. And 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 uh, you know, put that propaganda out. Now they're going to do it on young boys in cartoons, and then y'all going to turn around and say it's just comedy. Hey, all it takes is a little bit of critical thinking. And if you are a follower of mine, if you've been watching what we've been talking about on here, somebody get this pretendian up about out my comments, please. Man, go to yo never know. Uh, tribe and find your people. Why you in here? Go somewhere. Bye. My goodness, Chief Ch Chief Copper Color. What in the world? Go somewhere, please. Never know. Absolutely not. Y'all and y'all karaoke Indians. Get out of here, man. All right. So anyway, they over here gonna make fun of black folks and get paid at the same time. I think this is why. I think this is disgusting. I think this is disgusting. I think this is disgusting. And I know the outrage won't be there. I know it won't be there. I know us. I know y'all. I know y'all. I know y'all. Y'all are used to this. I'm used to it too. This is an outrage. It's a cartoon, first of all. 
That this is an outrage. If this was a cartoon by black people about a Jewish family and we had all of these stereotypes, it would be it would be so anti-Semitic. Boy, you, you think what happened to Kanye is bad? I'm telling you right now, anti-blackness is palatable to y'all. I know it. I know it. Anti-blackness is palatable. Why do I got all these pretendians in here today? This is not a somebody else in here. What the heck is going on? Why are y'all in here? Why are y'all in here? Don't y'all got TPs to build or something? Hey, leave me alone, man. Y'all building TPs on on Main Street and Martin Luther King Boulevard. Y'all 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 eating fried chicken and TPs. What y'all doing, man? Come on, man. What, that don't even make no sense. We ain't even talking about who's African and who's not. Why are you coming in here, though? What the hell? What the hell is going on? That's weird. What in the world? It's kind of wild in here right now. What, what kind of algorithm they got me on? I'm talking about. I'm talking about a cartoon. And I don't know, man. I'm getting a lot of Yankees in here. What's going on, y'all? I'm getting a lot of um. I'm getting a lot of Yankee Doodles. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a lot of TP dwelling. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It, hey, man, if you feel like I'm not African, then go be not African. Like, why are you coming in here telling me? Do y'all tell? Do y'all tell white people you're not African? Like, I'm I'm confused. Like, or did you just see a face that looked like your face and decided you needed to inform me that you're not African? Like, I'm confused. Why are you even in here? If you're not African and I'm African, why are you coming here telling me what I am? You don't know why I am. You don't know who I am. You don't know nothing about my family. You don't know where I'm from. Why are y'all coming in here telling me I'm not African? We're not even talking about that right now. That's wild. I don't like what what the heck is going on? Like do you, go 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 tell the policeman that. Go tell the police. I ain't African, sir. I I ain't African. I'm American. Yeehaw. Like go tell them that. We the true indigenous. You see what they did to the indigenous? You think they care? You think they care? They gonna treat you better now? You think you think that changed anything? Come on now. I don't know what that. I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, hold on. Let me bring somebody up here, man. Amos Smooth, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Uh, YT, forty-three. I'm a male. Now, what on God's green earth made you decide you wanted to come up here today? Me. Talking to me? Yes. I just heard you talking, saying African American. And I just wanted to ask a quick question on that, if I can. No, you can't. Why what do you not? Want me to say? I was just wanted to say, are are you originally from Africa? All right. Goodbye. What's up, Timothy? Hey, what's going on, royalty? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm gonna um, say something. I'm gonna say something real quick. I'm not about to have um, uh, y'all come up here and continue to work up your ancestors by telling black folks they're not African. You know that's what your ancestors tried to do in the first place, which is why a lot of us don't have knowledge of our history and knowledge of ourselves because y'all decided y'all was gonna y'all was gonna uh, paint us a color black. And that that was going to be our identity because you can't subjugate a people that have knowledge of their history. You can't subjugate a people that know they come from the richest land. And you can't, you can't deny that because y'all can't get your filthy hands off our land in the first place. So you can't say we don't come from the richest land. You can't deny a people that have the longest history on earth. You can't deny that because even your own scientists say that humanity began in the African continent. And you can't say we, you can't say that we don't have the richest culture because we have the richest culture. That's the reason why y'all can't keep your hands off our culture. That's what this is behind me. So you can't tell someone that has the richest land, the richest history and the richest culture that they are African and then still subject them to enslavement. So y'all have to come up here and continue your family tradition 
uh, coming up here and telling black people they're not African. We're not going for it no more. And anybody that look like me but don't want to think they're African, that's fine. Go ahead, build your teepees, go put feathers in your hair, do whatever you want to do. You can go ahead um, and, and, and rain dance till the rain come pouring down. You go ahead. You know, I wish you the best of luck with the Nava Nose and the, and the karaoke's. You go ahead. The karaoke tribe, some of y'all, some of y'all blackfoot, lackfoot, whatever you want to be, y'all can be all of that. Chocolate tall, some of y'all chocolate tall. Come up here talking about you choc choc tall. Y'all choco tall. I see, I see the chocolate. Y'all look, y'all look very chocolate for some choco tall. What's going on, Timothy? Uh man, I'm, I'm over here crying at the chocolate tall. I got <laughs> tired, man. Come yeah, on, tell me I'm not African. We're, like y'all go do something. Do something with yourself. I don't know what TikTok algorithm is on. They were just like, all right, all the pretendians. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Did you see yeah. this? Um, did you see this trailer? I didn't see the trailer yet, but like, oh my gosh. Yeah, man. I, Two I'm and a so half minutes of bullshit. Uh, I'm so sick and tired of YT folks having all of this unlimited access to just representing black people. And it's just like, all right, why the hell do you even think that you could even come remotely close to being able to accurately represent an entire culture group? And this is in and of itself the reason why we need to be extremely defensive of our own shit, because they think that this is cool. Yeah. They think it's fine to do. Right. Like. They've been doing this for a minute, but it, it's crazy. In in plain daylight, well, moonlight, because, you know, the daylight probably make them melt. Um, skin melts off in the daylight. But in the moonlight, in the light of the caves, they will gladly portray us this way. And I just think it's wild because anti-blackness is so palatable. It's so funny. It's just comedy. Y'all need to be able to laugh at yourselves. But you would never do this about a Jewish family. You would never do this. They make fun of um, black Jesus in the, um, you know how in the original Good Times, they believed uh, Jesus was black. Well, in this one, Jesus is black. He playing 2K on his, on, 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 uh, on his TV screen. And, you know, they, they making fun of black Jesus now. And I'm just like, bro, like he got, um, it's just, the whole thing is just problematic. Like, then you go into um, the, you know, black women being promiscuous in it. Um, the, the little babies dealing drugs. Like, it's just like, bro, peace Detroit, yeah. what's going on? At this point, we might as well, like, they would be up and they, they would be ready to, to shut the whole everything down if it had anything to do with them. Like, mm -hmm. it, at this point, we should just make a TV show, like a cartoon show called Neanderthals. And just like, hey, let's promote that. And then have the main character be called Ooga Booga. And <laughs> <laughs> like, what's, like, what the... <laughs> and what's really <laughs> wild is this portrayal of the black family is literally the reason John Amos left the original show. He said he didn't like how JJ, his character was getting too focused on in, and they weren't focusing on more important things going on in the black community. And he said how JJ, how, how the, uh, the characters, the settings and, and the storyline was just unrealistic and didn't speak to, uh, you know, what it's like to actually be black. Like they kept trying to portray the original good times as like, this is what black folks are really going through. Sometimes it's hard to pay the rent. Sometimes it's hard to pay the bills. And, and you know, like, this is what they were saying. Yo, man, moderators, I don't know where y'all are at. Can y'all get some of these um, cauliflower coalition uh, common dwellers off of my live, please? Please block these folks. You know, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, no one, no one that looks like, you know, if they were a pastry, they would need to go back into the oven, um, should be in here telling me anything about what I'm talking about, to be honest. Um, y'all could have kept scrolling. 
if you don't like anything I'm talking about, then um, y'all could have kept scrolling. If you look like you belong back in the oven, you know what I'm saying? If you look like you are unbaked, you know what I'm saying? Don't come up here, please. Um, what was I saying, though? Yeah, um, John Amos, he left because he didn't like J.J.'s character and how the writers were non-black and they weren't actually portraying realistic storylines and realistic things about black family and it started to become a caricature. He didn't like the idea of people making fun of black trauma. Black people really are short on the rent in some places. That ain't funny. That ain't funny. Like, that, that's, that's wild to me. That's not funny. Like, economic disenfranchisement is a joke to these people, and it's something that they've decided, even though they're complicit in this joke in real life, they decided they're going to make money off of it too. That's just wild to me. That's just wild to me. And it if it ain't funny problem. to me, then... Why are you here? Like, if it ain't funny to me, am I allowed to have an opinion? It's funny how so many people that are freedom of speech lovers and love freedom of speech got something to say when a black man talking. If you don't like what I got to say, go. What the hell's wrong with y'all? Anyway, go ahead, Timothy. Yeah. No, they're, they're obsessed, bro. Like, they are fully, fully obsessed with black spaces. I mean, plus... Like, very, very clearly, their algorithms are screaming at them, telling them that, hey, go to Brother Legends Live, because they regularly go to black spaces for the purpose of attempting to disrupt them, just like how they're trying to do in the comment section. Like, what are you going to, like, the way in which people, black people call and address each other is not up for debate with a YT individual. That's that's not, like, no, that's not a, a realm of classification that you ever get to put yourself into or have a conversation about or attempt to center yourself in like that is just that thinking that you can is quite literally attempting to embrace an enslaver mentality mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they don't even see that they don't even see how racist that shit is that's literally the same shit that they used to do right before they forcibly put us onto the boats like mm -hmm. remove everything about us and then put us on the boats rip out the hair from our scalp and then put us on the boats. Tell us, hey, you are no longer whatever it is that you originally identified as, but get on that boat. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, man, I'm getting some really um we getting we getting clan members in here today. I don't know what's going on. Every everybody that if I put them in a lineup, if I put you in a room full of Africans and we couldn't tell the difference but you're native to this land or you had a grandmother that uh, is native to this land and you identify yourself as native. But if we put you in a room full of Africans, we couldn't tell the difference. Please drop a feather in the comments so I can block your ass. Please drop some feathers in the comments. If I could not tell you apart from Akon's cousin, but you think you an indigenous or an aboriginal, please drop a feather in the comment, you will get sent to the block party. Please. Go ahead, because I'm 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 not doing this with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Another thing that is weird, well, this one I didn't make a video on because I was like, this is kind of typical, you know, what I'm about to say. It's kind of kind of just is what it is. But it's something else I noticed this week going on. Did you see what happened in uh, Baltimore, in Maryland? Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Did you hear about what they're saying about the mayor? Oh, no, that part I didn't hear. What yeah, saying? so um, there's memes all over the internet because uh, the mayor of Baltimore addressed the situation. And, um, you know, young uh, fly brother with a, with a nice haircut, um, you know, they wasn't expecting that, I guess. Um, they was expecting Rip Van Winkle to come out, but he came out looking more like, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know, a young brother that played ball or something. Like, he, he looked like a young brother, you know what I'm saying? And um, there's memes all over the internet of them uh, basically mad at the fact that the mayor of Baltimore is black. Like, people are mad. People just found out because of, of the whole situation. 
they're yeah, exactly, Tia. They are big mad. Like, so six people were unalived, as far as I the last time I checked from that bridge collapse. Uh, well, from the boat smashing into the bridge and making it collapse. So six people were unalived, yet they don't give a damn about that. What they care about is that the mayor, the person who was going to be addressing, addressing the entire, there was going to be addressing this. They care about that person being black. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and what's wild, I, I would post the meme up here, but I just don't know how TikTok is going to respond to that, to be honest. I would post the meme up here, but it basically said um, uh, something like that bridge be falling down, y'all. That bridge be, be coming down or something like they tried to put B. They don't know how to use the habitual B. That's what's so funny about the memes. Uh, well, not funny, act, not funny, haha, kind of like funny, weird. Um, they don't know how to use the habitual B. They just know we use it. Um, so it says that bridge be falling, y'all, or something. And they got a picture of the mayor. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, uh, that, that bridge do be fall. No, I didn't say do be falling. It didn't say that. But that would be um, that would be more actually gr grammatically correct. Um, they don't know how we use the habitual be, and I say grammatically correct because um, uh, the way Europeans use the English language is not the way um. That, that it's not, you know, what has to be seen as grammatically correct. You can use the habitual be and still be correctly using English. Because English changes over time. A lot of y'all don't know that Shakespeare invented words. Shakespeare invented a lot of words that y'all don't even know about. Hmm. And it's funny because I see... Um... <laughs> I see our uh, African royalty in the comment section, like trying to say it incorrectly, but because they say it so correctly so often, they're not saying it correct, like incorrectly to <laughs> corroborate. <laughs> That's how you know. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, we <laughs> we know yeah. what to say. We know what it means. And even when we're trying to mock it, we can't say it incorrectly. Like that's <laughs> yeah, they, they, they don't know what it means because they don't know why we're saying it. They think we just throw it in there whenever we want. Um, but they don't understand that the B means that it happens habitually as opposed to, you know, if I say I, I'm going to the store, that means one time I am going to the store right now. If I say I be going to the store, that means I go frequently or over and over again, you know, habitually to the store. That's why it's the habitual B. Um, Black Wolf, what's going on? Give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Hey, what's happening? The reason why they're so pissed off because there's more than one black person that's in authority in Baltimore. That's what they're mad about. They didn't expect to see so many brothers that was in authority. Mm. With the fire department. See, they didn't like that either. See, they mm. didn't put up a meme about him. They went to the they went straight for the head man. And the brother's mm. cool, man. He he's cool as cool as all get out. You can tell he's 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 on his game. They didn't like that. They stopped all the traffic and they saved a bunch of lives. They don't like the fact that black folks has had had a hand in that. Mm. That's what they so pissed about. That's why they made that crap. Every, you from Baltimore? It's like, we, it's, it's like we can do nothing, man. It's like we can do nothing, and and they always gotta they always gotta throw some some, some dirt at us because. No, it's no matter what we do. It's like you know, they, like it's like what Tiger Woods. They had to make the bull crap and remark about fried chicken on 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 the golf course. No matter mm -hmm. what we do, they got to throw some mud at us. Mm -hmm. They they just plain stinking haters. But they mm -hmm. can't change the fact their brothers saved a bunch of lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's I I didn't um I I heard that yeah, he um he was able to get people not to be on that bridge. Is that what you're talking about when you say he saved lives? Yeah, he had they they had stopped the traffic going both ways and I guess the maintenance crew didn't have enough time to get off of the bridge. Mm. And that's what's sad is 
Some of them cats probably still under that water, man. It's really messed up. I, I don't live too far from there. I see. But, you know, I got big respect for them cats up there, man. They're doing a lot of hard, good work, man. And people, are, you know, they're not being recognized for it. I got a question. But they pissed us. They pissed them. Uh -huh. Where did Tyree Nichols happen at? Was that Baltimore? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't live in Baltimore. I, I live in another part of Maryland. Oh, okay, it's okay. like an hour away from me. All right. Somebody so know I'm not, where Tyree I'm Nichols sure happened? That. Oh, that was Tennessee? Okay. All right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah. I mean, that was my but, first you time. Know, I just want... I, I, Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was Go saying, ahead, no, I'm yeah, I was saying that was my first time uh, learning about the black mayor of Baltimore um, when I seen the video. And then, you know, as usual, there's, uh, you know, knuckle draggers in the comments, you know them. And then um, you keep going. Yeah, you keep going. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I like no. yeah. Then all of a sudden you got, um, all these all these memes i'm seeing all these memes and all that i'm like whoa uh yeah like they really got an issue and then you see them yeah. today they it's, it's it's trending it's like it's really republicans found out he was black and they upset they upset mm -hmm. it, that's crazy you know yeah. i i got i got big love for for any any brothers man as in these jobs, doing this hard work, keeping us safe, keeping things moving. And it's like, you know, it's like we don't, you know, our, our people never get any, you know, they never get any flowers for their hard work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I sincerely hope of any, any brother who's a mayor or doing any hard job, thank you for doing the work you're doing, especially like the fire department. I got my brother who was a fireman and a buddy of mine who's a fireman you know they work hard man you know they do hard work to you know to save people's lives and it's like they don't it's like they don't have any respect for it you know they say what you're a fireman i don't need you until their butt get in trouble <laughs> mm -hmm. it, well i mean it's, it's just crazy man it it's it's crazy that it's this day and time and the same garbage from the 40s and before is still going on. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, that never ceases to amaze me. It you only know. amazes us because we need, we keep, we keep trying to just, just act like we don't need, like it's not going on. Because the scholars that I read been talking about how it's been going on for a long time and it ain't never stopped. But they have really good marketing. Uh, YT Supremacy has really, really good marketing. They show y'all interracial relationships to make y'all feel like it's all good now. They got they show y'all um, TV shows with a black president. You know what I'm saying? Make y'all feel like, oh, okay, yeah. You know, they show y'all um, Puff De uh, P Diddy. They make mm -hmm. they show y'all you know certain black uh, successful people. That they can take down whenever they want, but yeah. um, you know they they show they show us all of that, and then it's real good marketing because the chances of us making it into the NBA, the chances of us making it to a football field, and um, you know even surviving a football field, even if you do make it to one, um, are very slim, very slim. Um, <laughs> it's about uh, uh, thirty million black men in America trying to get the job of what. I think it's like, like seven. Uh, it's a handful. Yeah, like a hand. It's like a like a few hundred, few uh, maybe a thou, a little over a thousand, or maybe a few thousand. I'm not sure, but it ain't in the tens of thousands. Oh. Um, but the chances of you making it to be a, a ball player very slim, and they show you these people to make y'all feel like you have a chance that it's all over now. It's just up to you, and it's not. But, um, and that's true, because yeah. one of the things that that tripped me out was um, before I got sick, I, I used to drive Uber and I used to do, um, <coughs> excuse me, I was doing um, pro sound work. 
Mm-hmm. And one of the things that kind of tripped me out was I had no idea because I'm not even into football. But I didn't know that college football was as big as it was. It's almost just as big as the NFL. I mean, yeah. I live in Merlin. When I took some people up to um, Baltimore to go to the football game, man, that place was jam slammed. I mean, it was like it took me an hour just to get into the darn uh, stadium. Yeah. I'm like, what in the world? Mm-hmm. So, you know, they making money off of that. And, I mean, they they making millions. Yeah. I mean, no matter how you try to flip this pancake, they making money on all sides. Yeah, they making money no off young, you young, young black athletic men. They, yes. they, they pick them just like they used to back in the day. It's all the same. Nothing has changed. It's just the, 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 the difference between, and this happens on the African continent as well, the difference between colonization and neo-colonization is that they've introduced capitalism as a way to make you feel like you made the choice yourself. So just like with uh, D-Rug dealers, um, you know, we can say that they choose to sell the D-Rugs. So on the surface, you'll see a D rug dealer, D rug, you know what I mean, standing yeah. on the corner, and you'll think he made that choice for himself. But what you're not seeing is that because capitalism rewards sociopathic tendencies, capitalism creates an environment where if you are willing to do whatever you got to do, regardless of the consequences, to make money, you will survive. So all they did was create the conditions. They made sure that D-Rugs was in our neighborhoods and 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 even flew them in, if you know about COINTELPRO, but uh, took away resources and job opportunities from black men and, and, and did everything in the background to make the environment where being a sociopath would actually make you profitable by uh, uh, selling D-Rugs and risking your own life in, for your own community. But at the surface, it looks like he made that choice. But what y'all don't see is that all the other choices and the options are taken from him intentionally. So it's like, that's where they get us at. And that's where they get a lot of even black folks at in different areas. You know, we talk about black men being unemployed and um, black women saying they don't want to settle for struggle love. And it's like, well, the struggle is not entirely the choice of the black man. We don't control hiring, firing, or the means of production in any industry in order to guarantee our, our ability to get a job. But we can take personal responsibility, of course, but personal responsibility only quells the effects of systemic oppression. It doesn't eradicate the oppression in general. So everyone's not gonna have the willpower or the critical thinking to hold themselves personally responsible despite the environment. And we're the only people that would have to think that far. I know white people that don't know what kind of car they drive. You could ask them, what kind of car is that? They don't even know the brand. They don't know what kind of sneakers they got on. They don't know how much money's in their bank account. If you ask them, do they have uh, insurance and registration in their car? They probably go, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get pulled over. Um, the reason I know this is because I've worked jobs at uh, insurance companies where people would call in and I'd say, can you give me your policy number? And they'd be like, uh, 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 and I'm like, you're driving, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't have your insurance card? That is blasphemous for a black man. I got my insurance card with me. Shoot, if I take a bicycle, I'm got my insurance card. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, so, I worked in um, banking and finance for, for seven years, so that is absolutely, I had over uh, 10,000 career calls at one one uh, at uh, one job before, and that is very true. Like, they is. don't know shit about their own shit. Nah, they don't know how much their own bills are. You, you'd be like, uh, they, they'll, they'll ask you, like, how much is my bill every month? Like, you don't know, I know how much everything that come out of my account is. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we don't get to be that ignorant. We don't, we have to be on point all the time and not saying that we can't be, we can, but for some people that is a bar that is, unex, um, that is, uh, it doesn't, 
how can I explain it? That's a bar that is a little too high for some people. And because mm. that bar has to be set so high for us as black people, we are not going to have everybody able to get a job. Every And whenever in a society there's people that can't get jobs, there's people that's having a hard time, you don't blame those people. You blame the society that created the systems in the first place. You know, so... I, you know, that's a that's a thing. P personal responsibility ver and, and versus uh, collective responsibility is something we struggle with because they've made it seem like we make these choices on our own. And that's just that's like saying uh, if you ever seen the movie Saw, that's like saying they chose to saw their own legs off. It's like, no, Jigsaw, the serial. <laughs> yeah, he put them in an environment where their choices were saw your leg off or be on alive. Mm. You know? mm. Yuck. <laughs> That's the thing. I have a hard time dealing with uh, blood and stuff. But anyway. Yo, what's good? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let me uh, speak but to the I, next guest. absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what's going on. I mean, the, the analysis is, is outlined. And this is what I was saying. We are a people at war. We just, we just gotta, we don't like the idea that someone else is making the choices for us. And so we have to tell ourselves we're making the choices ourselves. Um, but if you're into, um, or, or even just look up Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. and Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, they explicitly explain how racism, white tea supremacy, um, controls our environment and, um, gives us the outcomes that we see today, you know, and the, the things that white executive producers are making comedies about, you know? Huh? Yeah, I, they did some crazy stuff up here where I live at, and I was unaware of it for a while until um, this older friend of mine was telling me about it. And I was like, are you kidding me? He said, nah, man. He said, they left that, they left that rail car right there, two of them, mm. full of them lead slingers. Mm -hmm. And he said they emptied them joints. Mm. They, they wow. left them there unlocked and, and, and they did it spitefully so that they could go in there and get them. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was like, are you kidding me? He said, man, he said, <laughs> he was explaining a lot of stuff to me that, you know, I was unaware of. And well, he kind of start me, started me on the trail of figuring things out and it's like man are you kidding me wow. i was like man they 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 really do not give a flying monkey about us mm -mm, no you know yeah. and the sad part of it is because where i live at how can i explain this area where i live at is a lot of people that's blind because i live in like a government town if you know what i mean and it's there's something here for anybody and everybody to do. Mm. If you can't get a job here, something wrong with you. So with that being a, being the case, people start to look at people a certain way, but they still forget about the people that are not in position to get some of these jobs because they don't have the skills to get them. Mm -hmm. So like you can't get a job working at the Capitol because you 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 got a felony or you got you know a criminal record you can't get a job working at certain places here mm -hmm. you yeah. know you you got any criminal history some of these jobs you like metro or um you know work <laughs> working anywhere near the white house you can forget it yeah you know and it's, it's it's crazy because you got people and one of my associates he irritates me with that is, man, they're just being lazy. And that's like they're not being lazy. You get felonies and records and stuff. Because I remember when I, I took a job down to Virginia. And they ran through me one way, nine. I mean, they ran through everything on me. I, I mean, they. I didn't even. The job was working for a tow road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They ran through everything on me. And all you gotta do is take money. No, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even work in that I wouldn't even work in that side of it. I was working the maintenance side of it. <laughs> you know, keeping keeping the road repaired, but
but they but what the way he explained it to me was because I was able to go into the toll plaza where the money is counted and all of that stuff. Oh. I had they they had to I had to jump through those hoops because they want to make sure that I ain't gonna come in there with a pew pew and try to jack the place. Wow. Even even though I wouldn't make it nowhere, but you know. <laughs> but it is it's it's crazy, man. Yeah, I heard brothers getting uh pictures of their tattoos at a job interview. Like someone Excuse one, me. Just, Excuse oh. me, brother. I'm sorry, guys. Uh brother, uh you're a Panther, no? Why are you asking me that? We don't ask questions on here. Why do you have something to say? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm asking you if, if you're a Panther because I, I thought I, I met you before at one of the movements. Um, you look like uh, one of the brothers that I know, and I, I'm not sure if you're him. I'm not your brother, and I don't know why y'all ask me that. You're not the first person to come up here with that. that well, if you're if you're not my brother, you must be the enemy, right? Yeah. All right. If you're not with the Panthers, you're not with the movement. You don't know what you're talking about, so. Yes, I do, because the Panthers are with us. You know what I mean? We're together. With who? We're we're the Kampali Commandos, the the also the Brown Berets, <laughs> the movement. So you're telling me that you're not with us, right? No. So you're not a Panther. Thank you. All right. Have fun with what? you. I don't know what that was. You're what not. You a, that? You're not a panther. You're not one of us. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> bro really thought. Bro really it's thought he came up here and ate. Like, he was like, right? like I'm supposed to say, yeah. oh man, I'm not a panther, guys. <laughs> <laughs> man. Anyway, I used to do. I used are to do you? Those, those 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 shows with those rallies man that's not the first time someone has come up here um another uh uh mexican dude came up here before and said the same thing you look like my you look like my friend that is one of the panthers like i don't know where there's just a panther um gathering and i guess there's somebody in there that looked like me or or they think all black people look alike and that's what's going on or they're in some type of gang themselves and they're trying to like check me on something. I don't, I don't know. I'm not part of that gang culture. I'm not, uh, allied with nobody that ain't black. And, um, as far as, uh, joining an organization, I have my own. That's B1 initiative foundation. Uh, we're empowering black people and Africans across the globe. So I don't need to join no other organizations. Um, as far as the Black Panthers, I got mad love for the OG Black Panthers. The new Black Panthers are cool, but um, only you'll only see me speak on them as, as far as history and Dr. Khalid Muhammad, some of their viewpoints. Um, I'm not walking around uh, wearing black all day. Um, not that I look down on that. It's just that's that's not me. I'm, I've got uh, greater aspirations. Um, Jay Wynn, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. What's good? Um, I'm biracial. My age is I'm 18. I'm born in 2006, January 24th. So I make sure, you know what I mean? All right. Um, biracial yeah. itself is not a race uh, so yes it is it's, it's, whenever it's someone says that biracial is their race we know they have a black parent. biracial pride you know biracial that? pride biracial pride you feel me? No, listen we're not gonna do that because what, what? i'm gonna what is that? So wrong? because at the end of the day what? bro the the problem is is that what you're not realizing is that I'm literally in this of the same background okay product no, of an okay what, what type of race are you with you're, product you're, Marriage, but what you're not doing is um acknowledging the fact that you are black. I know I'm black. Are trying but, to, but, but, why but, are you coming up here talking about being no, biracial? No, 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 no. You just let, said you know let, you're black, let, 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 but then you come let, up let, here let, talking let, about biracial let, pride, biracial pride. What the hell is that? That's not even a thing. Biracial pride, please. When did y'all have a march? I want to know. Uh, we got a march uh yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Okay, how many people was there? Two, 
about like two thousand. It, it, it was it was it was a it was a thick it was mulatto. Him with the it was not a thick nice. It, it was the boy. beige brigade. Yeah, it was yeah. just him with a poster. Yeah, 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 it was him with a poster. That's it. <laughs> nah, y'all niggas funny. <clears throat> I mean, Yo, excuse <clears throat> me. Oh, my fault, my fault. Oh no, nah, you gotta go, bye. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. It was doing that. Yeah, nah. See, though, that 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 those types of individuals be the ones that I was talking about that were very much so problematic in in you know during the plantation days. Oh yeah, we know them. We know them. Yep. Trust me, my my epigenetics starts tingling. My epigenetics that didn't trust biracial people <laughs> on the plantation starts to tingle. So I definitely know what you're talking about. Um. Excuse me while I look for another prompt, y'all. You know, that Family Guy thing kind of got me heated. Family Guy thing kind of got me heated. What y'all want to talk about? What y'all want to talk about? What's going on with y'all today? Um, I did have a prompt. Dang, I had a prompt about religion that uh, went sideways because the, um, <laughs> the algorithm didn't like that. I actually made a couple of prompts about um, about you know Christianity and and things related to that because I mean obviously that was my background and then I actually started reading books outside of the book that they claim is the it's the only history book that's my history book the Bible and then mm -hmm. you actually read the Bible and then come to find out it's literally littered with every single form of just disgusting behavior that you could possibly imagine it's it ain't happened y'all it it didn't happen just. Just please read books outside of the one book that they keep on telling you to only read. Mm. Like, please. <laughs> yeah. like, anyone, like, John Henry Clark says he questions the intelligence of anyone that uh, looks at the Bible as a history book. Like, um, no, wait, is that what he said? No, anyone that... I don't know. It's, it was something to the effect of anyone that looks at the Bible and takes it literally. Like, uh, something to that effect. I, I can't find the actual quote. Maybe some of the scholars in the comments know. But it was something to that effect, where it's like, anyone that takes it... Oh, nah. This one got me in trouble. Hold on. I gotta find a prompt that didn't get me bananaed or taken down. <laughs> <laughs> that one got me in trouble. What's this one? Okay. Do black people benefit from anti-racism? A lot of people get caught up on these questions, man. A lot of people get real confused. Um, one of the more fun things that I do on my platform is highlight the difference between anti-racism and pro-blackness because a lot of y'all don't know what it is. And a lot of y'all want to be pro-black so bad. So bad. Yeah, they want to be pro black so bad while regularly actively engaging in anti black things. <laughs> yeah, at the same time. <laughs> at the same time. This one got me in trouble too, I'll be honest. I might leave this one up. I don't know. This one got me in trouble, but it didn't, it didn't get me taken down. But it definitely got Diddy up here. Diddy, yeah. Diddy, Diddy. Mm -mm -mm. Diddy yeah. do it, Diddy not. Diddy do it, y'all. Diddy, isn't Diddy running? Or is that not yeah, a thing? Yeah, we're on the like, run. Oh, damn. Yeah, he did it. He said, fuck a beat. <laughs> you know that song? F a beat. What did he say? Damn, I can't remember. But yeah. Uh, if he, F a he, beat. He, I was trying to beat the case. <laughs> yeah, take K. What did he say? I was trying to beat the case. What did he say after that? What did he say after that? Yeah, somebody tell me what TK said. But I ain't beat the case, bitch. I did the race. <laughs> yo, TK, yo. Like how you give your whole getaway plan in your song. <laughs> <laughs> and then he really took he really took off. Yeah. What's up? Cyborg Sky, what's going on? Give us your age, race, and pronouns. Black twenty two, uh, he him. All right, talk to us. Uh, First, I want to say that other brother on here earlier <laughs> talking about biracial pride. <laughs> he might as well came on here and said uh, he was a proud boy at that point. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
What do they need to be proud about outside of, you know, they are not oppressed outside of being black, outside of black that he claimed. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. what are y'all proud about? They're oppressing you. And he's probably half black and white, but that's besides the point. But, yeah, I've never seen a yeah. um a photo from like the 50s during Jim Crow where it said um, biracial people only. <laughs> exactly. But, um... Yeah. And y'all were talking about the Diddy thing right now? Yeah, you know, Diddy, Diddy on the run, man. Did he do it? Did he not? I don't know. Um, you know, they say guilty to proven is innocent, but I think he did it. Um, and then people are trying to big up him like he's uh, one of the big guys in, like, the black community. Oops, my bad, guys. Um, he is, but, like, you can't really back him with, that, with so much stuff on his name. Um, but I did see one thing on here, and they said white people don't know enough about Diddy or the culture to be mad about what he's doing. They're just mad another big in the black community is going down. So that was an interesting mm. thought. Um, so, mm. I mean, that's that's an interesting take. To, to be honest, I look at Diddy the same way I look at Jonathan Majors. You mm. know. Um, Diddy was given that wealth by uh, the same people Jonathan Majors tried to uh, marry into. So, um, you know, you, you play in the show, you might get frostbite. All right. <laughs> playing this, I like that. Okay. Because mm-hmm. de- he definitely, you know, he definitely was their 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 guy for a little bit, you know. So he, you know, he was making the money, and that's the only way you can become a billionaire. There's no such thing as an ethical billionaire. Um, you have to exploit labor, and um, because it, by exploitation, I mean you can't pay someone what their what their work is worth, and still become a billionaire. That's it's just impossible. You have to exploit people in mass in order to become a billionaire. So. That being the case, Diddy, most more likely than not, exploited his own people to get that status. And you don't get billions of dollars from the black community alone. Mm-hmm. You get billions of dollars when you do um, what benefits the community at large, um, not black community, but the community that has billions of dollars to spend. So you can see videos of him with other uh, YT billionaires uh, kind of acting weird. Um, him, Meek Mill, a uh, bunch of people. You know, it's kind of very telling of their relationship. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, when I look at Diddy, I just see a black man that tried to fit into their world and got rejected. And that's what happens. Let like, me um, expand on that little last part. Did you hear what Candace Owens said? She said, um, the FBI... They're raiding his house not to find stuff. Because you said, like, the community, the white people, the billion, the YT people, the billionaires rejected him, right? Yeah. But Candace Owen has a different take. What's good, said, my black brother? What's good, what's good? Hey, stop it. He said um, they invaded his cribs not to find stuff, but to cover up stuff. Because they said they didn't really find much yet, and they've been looking for how long? And then they said he was spotted in Miami, but he still got away. So the feds definitely, they would have got him if they wanted to, or they could have got him if they wanted to. That's the conspiracy on that one. So they're still working with Diddy to keep him innocent, I guess. Like he's still in with the with the group, but mm-hmm. it was just it's a little sketchy how they didn't put him down yet. And they've been raiding his place. And then Candace Owen was saying that they're trying to cover up stuff with the raid, not find stuff. So it was, it was interesting. I, so. I think that's Cap. I'll be honest. The only reason I think that's Cap is because it was a Fed raid. The feds raided him, and they raided him in both Miami and in Los Angeles. So that's a coordinated, like, we yeah. got evidence to raid your ass type of raid. And so my thing is, if that type of stuff is happening and they show up empty-handed, then that's just not going to make sense. Like, they, they got to have something on him. Uh, like... You can't raid a billionaire that has good lawyers in two locations and 
turn up with nothing. They can't cover that up. Yeah, they want to definitely get sued for that or something like because if you got a good yeah. lawyer. Uh, but the, another point that they were making was like he had team like on his team the security guards were also involved in the FBI or ex FBI agent something like that. So they had some insight on that. But when you have that much money. There's no doubt you can have that much power to to, to do some cover up stuff like that, but oh, so yeah. yeah. I mean, same thing with Kanye. They throw them away when they're done. When you no longer serve the purpose of uh, you know the community in power, then they just dis- they. And that's and then, honestly, as somebody that was in the music industry, you know, somebody that's. Um, works with um, Diddy's children. I never worked with Diddy, but I've worked with some of Diddy's artists. One of the first studios I ever went to was Daddy's House in New York. That's what it, that's what it was called. I'm not sure if it's still called that, um, but Diddy's studio used to be called Daddy's House. Um, like, I've been you know around enough uh, to know that they're not really as rich as they say they are. They're not really as like balling, like his studio was used to be bummy as hell. Like I'm be honest, he's like the furniture was like chewed up by like dogs. Watch what you say, boy. Like it was like they come after, they come after you. They come after you. The Jews will come after you. Watch what you say. Jay Wayne. Jay Wayne. No, I'm not that person. I, I let him back up because only thing, I, only reason I took him out is because he said the N word. But yeah, he just called me a boy. We not doing that. <laughs> and in his bio, it says foundational Black America. How you be that confused? Yeah, we're talking um, about biracial pride, foundational Black American. Don't even know what the hell he took. All right, he's the same guy. Yeah, he he got he got a problem. Some something ain't right in his brain. It's all right. It's that it's that biracial in him. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it came out just now, right? Calling like I like even the way he said boy. Like watch what you say, boy. Like he literally said boy. Like <laughs> I don't know what that was. Either he's that ignorant, or he really. He know what he's doing. Yeah, he know what he's doing. He know what his mama taught him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing about them them uh frosty females, man. That's why the that's why black men get looked at kind of wild in the black community. Um when we um you know try to date within that community versus when the sisters do. Is because it does have a longer lasting effect, especially on the minds of the children. Especially on the minds of the children. Not to say that the black woman always passes down the culture, because we know damn well Meghan Markle, um, her mother didn't pass down not a damn drop of the culture. Meghan Markle tried to pass as black. Shoot, she passed so well, she forgot she was black. And then she didn't realize she was black until she was mistreated which is another problematic biracial thing, is that they only view blackness in terms of mistreatment because they see their blackness as something that holds them back in life because they could be pure white, but it's just that black side of them keeps, keeps knocking them down. So, so whenever they talk about black people and whenever they talk about what's good for black people, they speak about it um, in terms of oppression. Like, you know, uh, being pro-black is just supporting and stopping racial injustice and and you know um you know stopping discrimination and things like that like they see like that's how they see our people is just um our only goal should be to stop white people from being so mean so they'll let us in and have a seat at their table and um that's what they're trying to do you know ever since they were born they've been trying to get a seat at their mother's table but their mother look at him and say, you're biracial. You ain't white. So, you know, that's the thing. I can confirm that. That's, you know, because I'm like, uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Brother Ledger, but uh, for Cyborg, uh, yeah, I'm of that background as well. So that is very much so a thing. Um, there'd be a lot of us out here just very lost in the sauce, very confused. And it, in the vast majority of cases, has to do with the YT side of our family instilling very confusing ass ideals. And um, I was lucky enough to grow up in a predominantly black community. So I knew early on that I was black. Um, but there's a lot of us that are not so lucky. And 
but still, you know, I'm not going to be out here saying or pretending that I don't have things to unpack because it's a lifetime journey. Um, but the process of decolonizing is literally a lifetime journey in and of itself. So, but yeah, we'd be lost in the sauce. Very. Yeah, I'm glad I ain't biracial. I'll be, I'll be black any day of the week. <laughs> I'm good being black. I'm glad I don't got them problems, man. That is, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the biracial brothers and sisters. We know y'all got a long journey, you know what I'm saying? So if you meet us where we at, we know y'all had to work twice as hard uh, to love yourselves, Um, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of y'all don't make it that far, you know what I'm saying? Somebody said half rope in. <laughs> Afro uh, <laughs> I'm biracial. I'm from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the type of mental gymnastics that some of the, I be hearing, I'm just like, bro, like you black, like it doesn't, you're black. Like you do realize that like there's been a whole caveat of historical figures that very much so were unapologetic about that shit. Like Frederick Douglass, his whole father was an enslaver. He watched his father completely like brutalize his aunt because his father, who was his, his enslaver, um, didn't like the fact that she uh, was entertaining the romantic advances of another enslaved black man on another plantation. He wanted her for himself. And that's like within the first two chapters of his of him talking about his life story. And yeah. You know, like, a fun fact about him I like is how when I learned that he would go around plantations and can I say that? Can I say beat? Uh, yeah, you can. Okay, he, he would like beat other slave breakers. You know, the slave breakers, their jobs were to. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I read about that story. That was all. Oh, I was, I, I'm not going to lie. When I was reading it, I was like cheering at the same time. It was just quiet as hell. And all of a sudden you hear just like, yeah, like, all right, yeah, whoop his ass. Yeah, like just out of nowhere. Like, what? <laughs> cool. like uh, he whooped the dog mess out that dude. And it was so funny to read. <laughs> there was a couple of them, I think. But yeah. Um, and then yeah. about the interracial part, um, mm. Dr. Uma, I, I just found out, I just um, heard this take of him. He said something about black men get the yt woman that yt men don't want oh yeah no nah, yeah that's a fact i've been saying that for a long time that's a fact yeah i was yeah. saying it's a simple fact just off the fact that yt men want a like-minded like racist almost like they don't want a but woman it, who, it, who entertain entertain yeah. that's a no, relationship with a uh oh, what happened? I don't know what happened. But you gotta think about it in terms of power. That's the obvious one. You gotta think about it in terms of power. When women marry, they trying to marry up. They trying to they trying to come up in life. Especially they women. They they trying to come up. That's why you see them around a bunch of basketball players. They trying to come up. So why the hell would a white tee woman want to come up by getting with a regular ass brother? You know what I'm saying? Unless you a ball player, you got some. You got a, a access to wealth that she don't got. Then, you know, not saying that makes it right or anything. That's 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 still them using you. But that you know is a little different. That's that's them using you to get access to wealth. Still, probably one of the ones that you, they they don't want because um, she her ass is broke. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that's the thing. You know, white teeth man. Want to marry into a good family, you know? Ivanka Trump, look at them, you know what I'm saying? Look at look at Taylor Swift, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, if they getting with a bro if they getting with a brother, and you know you not a multi millionaire, you know you a regular brother. Trust me, that is one of the ones that they didn't want, because if they wanted her, she would have went with them. If she had a chance to be with a white T man. And wield his his privilege, um, and have um, the, uh, her privilege as well. She would have went that route, but at some point they rejected her. It's usually either because she's too round, and you know they have a lot of fat phobia in their community. Um, maybe she's a feminist or a leftist. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she she dyes her hair, 
and, uh, you know, got a bunch of tattoos on her. You know, they, they like to give off the idea that they can uh, produce pigment. They can produce the pigment, you know, melanin. So they like to color their skin. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she's, um, I don't know anything. Maybe she's got non-European uh, features, you know what I'm saying? Right. She got uh, big lips, big wide nose or something. They don't like that. You know, whatever it is. So they don't like that. The fat ones, that, the big ones go to go to black men every time. That's usually, white men don't want them. They want Taylor Swift, okay? They want that thing to look like, look like, um, you know, pancakes. That's what they like. They like flapjacks. Mm-hmm. Unleavened bread. Yeah. Every film. But yeah. Did you hear about the, Ro- do you know about the Rogam shot? What's that? So apparently, um. Interracial couples have to get a Rogam shot to have a baby, or else the woman's body will reject the the seed of the the black man. Um, no, it's like that's, a, that's cap. It's a blood type thing. It was like a not completely rejected. It, it, it's more of a based on blood type than race, really. But it's just something about look, look it up. Like oh, they need a Rogam shot or something. But um, so well, I mean, one thing I will say is that there actually is like um, research that does corroborate that it's actually more difficult to uh for interracial um couples to have children than it is for um you know like say for example if it's uh <clears throat> like i think um or actually you know what, let me correct that uh, the research that i was reading is saying that it was more difficult for black women to be able to conceive children if their partner was yt and it's common it was, yeah like it was showing that as being like more of a statistical and I think that actually does happen. So there actually is differences between, you know, choosing like um, if you are a person of African ancestry and choosing to date within the black community, there is a difference between your likelihood of being able to actually conceive a child. It's more likely to be able to conceive a child if you are d- attempting to do that within the black community as a black person, <laughs> black um, less likely outside. I got to see this. I got to see this data. Um, what's yeah. his name talks about it? Um, Young Pharaoh. Put it but, um, there's not a lot out there. Yo, Pharaoh, see, that's what I'm saying. These are guys are clowns to me. They're clowns. I, I hear yeah. what you're saying, but you know, I, like Young Pharaoh, I, I think he's 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 got attention deficit disorder or something. <laughs> his, his eyes move really fast. I'm like he's so absolute about everything. I think he's going to get a Rico charge or something. Like, I don't know. He that's crazy. I've been around a lot of rappers. Um, I, like he gives me rapper vibes, and that's not a good thing because they a lot of those guys can't read. Y'all be looking up to him, a lot of them can't even read. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm beyond like I don't I don't think he's I don't think he, I don't, I don't think he's someone that has read enough scholars to really be talking on some of the things he's talking on. But I think he's taught. On, I think he learned from the internet. Yeah, I'm talking about research papers from PubMed. Uh, yeah, Young Pharaoh. I mean. Some of his points, you know, I'd be I'm like, oh, okay, all right, he he maybe like he read up a little bit on that research paper here and there, but yeah, there's a lot of the other stuff that he'd be diving into is just like, all right, that's not correct, but okay, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, bro. He give he give me um, what's that dude that said? He said something like, "I'll be making love to my baby's mother." And my baby come in the room and he grabbed my my jewels. And I love him. Uh, Kevin Wait, Diggs. Nature Boy. Kevin Diggs, yeah. No, nah, it's not Kevin. Nature Boy. Nature what? Boy. Look up Nature Boy. The man's crazy. The man's what I know Kevin Gates ain't say that. Kevin Gates said that too. I think he does say it too. Rappers. I think he just said something similar too. I'm telling you now, young Farrell's a dumbass. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I mean, you can't do it. Uh, I, I I read too much. We're doing Sankofopedia. We're going to educate our people. I love that the young brother has some pride in himself. I love that, you know, he's uh, sought to educate himself as much as he can. And that is great, man. I just, I'm not a fan. I can't get with it. Young Pharaoh, um, Nick Cannon, like a lot of, a lot of them. Like, what about Omar? And, Dr. Umar too. You know, he's cool. Right. Dr. Umar is cool. Like Dr. Umar is cool. This platform, I got mad respect for Dr. Umar because um I see how 
intentional he is with his words. I see that, you know, he is spreading the knowledge of the ancestors. He's done a lot of work. I got I can't put young Pharaoh and Dr. Umar in the same in the same boat. Um Dr. Umar is uh probably the closest to any, you know, quote unquote influencer. Uh, and I, I feel like he's more than an influencer, but um uh, you know, because he's done a lot of work on the ground. It's just he's he's he started to I don't know. Sometimes I feel like he needs to reel back on making some of his content because uh, it starts to trivialize his message. So he loses me when he starts conspiracy uh, when he starts doing the, all these conspiracies as far as like Kobe uh, the um. Kobe didn't die the way he died. Is the uh, the feds did this and all types of other shit that he says. That's when he loses. Yeah. Me. He loses me when he does that. He, he loses me because at one moment he's talking about black liberation, being pro black, what black people need to do, pan Africanism. He's speaking from the work of the scholars, John Henry Clark, uh, Dr. Amos Wilson. You know, he's speaking. He's speaking that ish, and then he'll turn around and say, "A little yellow alien punched me in the face one day. I was sleeping." And an alien punched me in the face. And you're like, bruh, how are we supposed to take you seriously now? That's like, like imagine your surgeon coming to do surgery on you. And he's like, man, I woke up this morning. I swear to God, I saw an alien walk, walk across my room. I don't want surgery from you. I don't want to learn nothing from you. I'm good. I don't, you see what I'm saying? And he's doing surgery on the African-American, Pan-African community because He's the one that we trust. He's the one we put in that position, the same way you trust a surgeon. And, um, you know, for him to turn around and talk about conspiracies and, and wild shit like that, it's like, bro, you you taking away from your own message. You, and that's his ego a little bit, you know? So, but I think he sets a great example. Um, he sets a really great example. That's, 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 I gotta give it to him. Young Farrell, I don't know about that guy. Polite. Um, you know, he's another one like, you know, these guys, they are pro black, but they keep getting caught up in charges. I think young Pharaoh got arrested or something. Right. Am I tripping? Yeah, probably. I think the speculation that I don't know what they're talking about, um, with a clone, but I don't know. He got arrested and they did something to him. It's a lot of BS. They, out there. they clone. See, that's what I'm saying. That's conspiracy. Yeah. I can't do it's, that. It's, I, it's, I, it's not just them. It's the, it's the community. I'm like, y'all are. I mean, it's cool. It's fun to speculate, but y'all, y'all believe it. Like, but and then some, some of the stuff is just like, come on. But like then, so I just stick around for like the pro black stuff sometimes. And um, yeah. I, find, I find funny the like extreme he goes to. Like you can get a comedic laugh out of some of it. And then yeah, no, nah, yeah, it's good entertainment. I ain't gonna lie, it's good yeah, entertainment. Yeah, even the classification young before his name. You know, um, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Right. Uh, was talking about yeah yeah she was talking about that like how we instinctually because of white supremacist constructs and system and societal norms they determined that you know black men cannot be anything other than outside of the classification of man because man automatically is held by yt men so it's like all right you can't be yt men so you can't even be like what we consider to be man, because by default, YT men are man. Mm -hmm. And so then she went on to talk about how you can either be baby, you can be um, uh, a boy, or you could be like all these other classifications that are beneath man. And so just the fact that we're internalizing and calling ourselves young or Lil or baby, like that is quite literally white T supremacy like that. <laughs> And so for him to say that, but claim to be so conscious, it's like, all right, you know, King, like, I, I need you to pick up her books. Like, I, uh, well, her book, I need you to, like, look at her lectures. I need you to, like, do that research because that's some shit to further unpack. Yeah, he's not going to do it. Uh, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't know. I get certain vibes from him, but maybe I need to meet him in person. Maybe I will one day. I do, I do plan on bumping shoulders with some of these guys. Um, I'm going to be the person that holds them accountable. So this will be interesting. Like Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon got a type, don't he? 
All his yep. women, all his women, uh, weird face, light skin girls, like um, like uh, what's his name? Uh, Cat Williams was talking about weird face. Yeah. I know weird face, mean. light skin. I said that to get in the club, they gotta do something and then date a weird face, light skin. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that interview he had with um Dr. Umar about yes. interracial uh relationships? Oh, Cat Williams with Dr. Umar. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Dr. Umar. Right now. Uh, yep. I saw some yeah. of it. I saw a snippet where he was talking about Nick Cannon wearing a dress, and I think that was it. That's all I saw from it. Really. Oh, no. Nah, he went into the interracial marriage part, and like he, you could tell Nick Cannon was uncomfortable as hell because he kept just like laughing in a, like inappropriately long at one chunk of it. And then, like, you see. <laughs> his women are watching so you know yeah that's <laughs> he asked like hey do you think that i had like made a bad decision by doing all of that and then dr umar was just like well i mean <laughs> well no he didn't he didn't like flat out tell him like all right you fucked up extremely bad my bro but he definitely did um he gave him a different way of looking at it and then you know nick cannon eventually kind of came to the conclusion he was just like well i do feel guilty for certain things and it was just like all right well at least that's that's a step in the right direction just admitting that you know there's a responsibility as black men that we have to the black woman and yeah oh, yeah yeah um yeah i can't take nick cannon seriously like that's the thing like some of these guys i feel like they're great entertainment i just can't take them seriously because what we're doing with b1 initiative and sankofa pd is like very serious it, it's, it's another reason why i even have a hard time creating content sometimes because i'm like but then i'll talk to my wife she'd be like you take it too serious like you know it's okay like you can talk to people sometimes you know that's so i'll be like on the edge because the more you learn about our ancestors and the history you start to see where like nothing about this is funny nothing about this like the only the only time I want to entertain is when it's with black folks because that's how we teach. Like um, before, um, reading was the way um, to pass on knowledge. Uh, you know, like now you're smart if you read books, but um, back in the day, you know, in our tradition, you were smart if you would listen to your elders. Um, oral tradition is how we passed on knowledge for thousands of years, and um, I am a listener. Uh, more than a, a reader. I, even when I do say I read a book, I really mean I listen to the audio book. But um, yeah, like, you know, um, I just feel like I don't want to trivialize what I'm building by, you know, talking about something that, you know, really is kind of just for entertainment, you know? So that's, I don't know, that's the thing with the internet. Like I feel like I'm in between that. Would you, like, you, never, you, you never saw Marcus Garvey do a, do a, a comedy bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not gonna find him lacking. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's good. You should keep doing that. Um, hold, hold face. Hold face. Yeah. I don't know. Have you gone into any of the literature on uh, black people being everywhere in the planet? since the beginning of time, like Europe, Antarctica, and um, the Americas. I don't know about Antarctica, but um, I got to look that one up. I don't know about Antarctica. And um, yeah, being everywhere. <clears throat> and there's people that go far and say, they'll say America's the old world. I think there's some, some stuff on that too. Mm. I'm sure you came across that. You came across that? Um, you said in America? America being the old world, like what Africa is claimed to be. So like America being the old world. Oh, like America being the original earth? Yeah. Like with, original... with having like black people on it. Um, yeah, so, I, I haven't found a scholar to verify that. Um, Timothy, have you looked into that? Any of that stuff? Like the Olmec tribe and things like that over here being yeah, black? Yeah, I know about Olmecs. I know about Ivan Van Sertima, but Ivan Van Sertima said that ancient Africans built uh, the Olmec empire. He like, so... Yeah. Um, that, yeah. That's, that's, that's his... That's his, uh, you know, own an, an analysis. 
but um we have learned some more information since that book came out and that's the thing about um history and like knowledge from these ancestors is that research has come out since some of these claims have been made mm. that sometimes can debunk some of the research but because people don't know how to read like and this i'm not saying know how to read a book just like read words but it's like you got to read something know who wrote it mm. not just their name but like what they do what they're about the context in which the book was written so the person that wrote the book you got to know who they are and what their perspective is on things but then you also need to know what the context was at the time when they wrote it did they have the internet did they have access to you know data that we have now did like you need to know certain things like when it was written like what they use some of sometimes they'll have a bibliography Sometimes they'll talk about their citations, certain things, unless it's a firsthand source like, um, like uh, Dr. Shaken at the Jump, um, uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams. Um, you know, Ivan Van Sertima, a lot of the stuff that he said still stands today. Um, about the Olmec Empire, we could say that's the most, I guess, um, heavily debated because um aside from the statues that have big lips it's like we <laughs> we, we were still waiting on proof like i i hear you i hear you them statues do look like um uh green mile dude you know they look like uh what's his name michael duncan clark definitely do but um can i stand on 10 toes straight faced in front of a large audience and make that claim. I just think it's interesting. Um, but even in his assertion, he says it was ancient Africans. He doesn't say that humanity started on the American continent. That's the wildest shit the internet has created. It is once again, white supremacy trying to convince us that we are not African. That is why I can, I have to reject that, that notion. I have to, it is once again, white supremacy is anti-blackness. People telling us that we didn't originate in Africa. We started life here in the world, in, in America. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, don't, they keep trying to disconnect us from the richest land in the world. South America is not rich like Africa is rich. So exactly. stop yeah. trying to trick me out of my treasure. I like I understand nobody like teaches me. Like I take from what they're knowing and then put it all together. Then I process it. So like um, based off on that. So I hear the claims about originating in Americas. I hear the claims originating in Africa. Don't you think it'd be like more powerful if we claimed we were just aboriginals to the planet over everybody? See, the uh, problem with that is that like it, that also stems from a type of self-hatred for trying to disassociate ourselves with originating from Africa. Because the mere concept of us talking about like, yeah, we don't need to identify with our Africanity. We don't need to identify with an African identity. Um, like the mere fact of us trying to do that is in and of itself something that stems from white supremacy. So there is nothing wrong with black African people saying that they are from Africa because that's where we are from. Yes, did we like it would be more appropriate to say that um, not that we are indigenous to the world because we were the very first people to ever migrate across the globe. Yeah, absolutely. However, it's important to clarify that we migrated to those spaces. When you say indigenous to the world, it almost gives a little bit too much of a credence, or it gives a little bit too much of a wiggle room for those people that like to believe that we like popped up on random continents across the planet and that we didn't come from Africa. Like it gives room for them to breathe. We don't want to give room for them to breathe because if we give room for that concept, then they're just going to keep on perpetuating the same self-hate of trying to disassociate from Africa. 
what we need to be doing is as black African people returning to the identity of unapologetically recognizing that Africa is where we are from and Africans is who we are and who we will stay. So, yeah. I mean, even from a like art of war perspective, how does it benefit us? How does it empower us to not connect ourselves to 1.4 billion people and people with the most resources for if we did need to take up arms, defend ourselves, build banks, build schools, um, like they have all these resources. In fact, the military industrial complex of America, Israel, Europe, all of them use these resources in their militaries. Um, Russia, China, like, like, why is it so hard for black people to just be African? It's the weirdest thing because everybody else knows your worth but you. And now we're, we're clinging on to random conspiracy theories from dudes named Young Pharaoh that struggle to sit still in an interview. Um, but we're not listening to John Henry Clark. We're not listening to John G. Jackson. We're not listening to uh, 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 Professor Smalls. We're not listening to, uh, you know, the list goes on. Yosef Ben Yakinen. We're not listening to any of these scholars that told us, even those that we found here in America have linguistic similarities, have, we, uh, uh, according to archaeology, we found uh, similarities in their culture, tracing them back to Africans. The Olmec people that you're talking about, when they look at the pyramids, they, could, they connect them to the pyramids in Africa to say that these people were African. No one has said the Olmec empire came first and then Egypt copied the Olmecs and created their own period pyramids. I've never heard somebody say that. And if, and if, and if anybody is saying that uh, we originated in America, that would have to be true because the Olmec pyramids are built in a similar way as far as uh, how they're able to point at the sky as the pyramids in Egypt. So who taught them that? Why do they have similarities in the, they, they both of them use the word, the word Ra, the word Ra for God. Like they both use the same word. Like who taught them that word? That's the wildest part to me that Ivan Van Sertema brought up was like, but he's connecting them back to Africa the entire time. So when did we become not African? Like, how are y'all going to, and that's the problem is like, y'all look at Afrocentric work with your anti-blackness. And then you take whatever you, whatever you can find in your, um, C double O in mind. And you take that information that's meant to empower you and you use it to further narratives that were meant to disenfranchise you. That's the problem. Yep. Exactly. Cause like they, they benefit y'all. They are the ones that benefit from us not identifying with Africa, from us not acknowledging that that is where we are from. They are the ones that benefit. We do not benefit from that at all. The pretendians will try to tell you and try to scream to the high heavens that we do benefit. We have to stand together. We have to, they'll say we want to stand together here in the Americas. That's what they'll say. But you tell me what is better having a, cause there's about a population of about 50 million black people in North America, roughly between like five to 10 million in the Caribbean. And then you got another like 85 million or so like in, um, in South America, I'm sure there's probably more. So having a military capacity to that number, you tell me if those numbers supersede the 1.5 billion that are on the motherland right now that also already have their own borders. They also have their own, some of them also have their own 
uh, concepts of military infrastructure. Um, not saying that it's perfect, not saying that everything is perfect. And of course, obviously, individuals of European ancestry have very much so colonized those regions specifically for the purpose of destabilizing their ability to be able to create military powers outside of being monitored by YT people. Um, however, the fact that they have that we have a whole continent over there, which is our original land, like that, that is a huge military benefit, y'all. That is a huge military benefit, but don't nobody want to actually look into real economic strategy. Don't nobody want to actually look into real military strategy. Don't nobody ever want to really actually look into what is necessary in order to be able to build the way in which people keep on talking about building. You need to know the basics of economics. You need to know the basics of military capacities. You need to know the basics of human migration. You need to know the basics of just of politics in these regions, you need to know the basics of these things in order to get a clear understanding as to how it is a more of a benefit to be in the motherland with our own people than to be scattered about like how we have been forced to be scattered about. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's um, quite unfortunate. The internet got a lot of these young brothers minds all messed up. And it's, it's a shame because it showed me a lot of the anti-blackness and some of the elders that taught me, you know, a lot of them love to bring up, you know, we, we, the indigenous ones, like they, they used to say, it. this is not a new narrative y'all. Um, I know some old heads that used to tell me that when we was young, but I also know some old heads that used to tell me you're African. Don't ever let them forget. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever let them tell you different, you know? So I had both sides in my ear, um, uh, growing up and, um, the whole thing with the um, the the pyramids being in the Grand Canyon and stuff like that, I never heard of till the internet. But um, yeah, heard some of them say that there's pyramids on Mars. So like, I don't like at this point, they basically see any rock formation that even remotely sims like is is even remotely close to being the shape of a pyramid, and they immediately assume, oh yeah, that was something that was built 30,000 years ago. It's like, all right, but have you acquired an archaeological team to actually go there? Did you get the permissions to be able to go there? Did you dig up any of the rocks? Did you find any artifacts that corroborate everything that you're, did corroborate your claims? Like, did you, do you even have the ability to be able to make a research paper about this? Like, are you like then you ask those questions and they're they don't even know what the hell you're talking about so it's just, okay right. well like <laughs> all that stuff matters y'all yeah absolutely well y'all i'm about to get out of here man appreciate you timothy thanks for joining um thank you for bringing that insight to us everybody 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 check out b1initiative.org the link is in my bio Shout out to B1Initiative.org in the building. Uh, peace to all the brothers and sisters that tune in almost daily. And um, yeah, we out here. If you want to join the Discord, feel free, B1Initiative.org. Uh, you'll find uh, the you'll find the Discord link on the app. And yeah, I hope y'all have a great rest of your night. I'll be back tomorrow. All right. One love. Peace.